Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing It Came From The Network. Topic of this It Came From The Network, Smoky Mountain Wrestling from April 30th, 1994, marked on Peacock as Season 3, Episode 18. If you haven't seen my shows before, I rate everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. And yes, I know the shirt's probably going crazy with the green screen. I actually kind of want to see what it's going to do, so bear with me. I kind of like when I have a little bit of green on my shirts and it has like the little see-through part. I don't know why. It's something I see that they do on Fact Fiend that I always think is kind of funny when he wears shirts that me mess with the green screen. So let's see how this green shirt works out. I do want to mention one thing before we go into this. Normally I recommend checking out the videos that I review for these. On this one I do want to give you a bit of a warning before you do that. If you do decide to go back and watch this, this is 30 years ago. There are some words that are not appropriate. They weren't appropriate then. They're definitely not appropriate now. I'll talk about it when I get to the, the parts, but there are some ethnic slurs. There are some homophobic slurs and a questionable flag. And we'll leave it at that for now. So I, I do say if any of that offends you, I don't recommend going back. Other than that, let's jump right in. We start off with Anthony Michaels and Bobby Blaze going up against Timothy Well and Stephen Dunn, a.k.a. Well Done. Well Done is a team to me that was about seven years past where they would have been really successful. And what I mean by that is they're a great tag team. Just the style that they wrestled and the, their look dates them back more to the hair metal era than the grunge and alternative era that they are in. I think they would have been super popular in let's say Jim Crockett promotions in 1986, 1987. They are a fantastic team. Well done does get the win here. I'm giving this match a three. Next up we get an interview with Bullet Bob Armstrong who announces a challenger for the Dirty White Boys Championship. That challenger is Jake the Snake Roberts. We go into a promo video for Jake the Snake Roberts. I mean if you've seen Jake the Snake Roberts you know he's fantastic. That leads us into the Dirty White Boy coming out. This is where we see a little bit of the issues come up. Uh, the Dirty White Boy has him play a video of Prince Karras, who was a mummy, and Daryl Van Horn, a.k.a. the Sinister Minister James Mitchell, and also a wrestler called Kendo the Samurai. Kendo the Samurai is being played by Tim Horner. There are some ethnic slurs here about Kendo and being Asian. There are some homophobic slurs thrown Daryl Daryl Van Horn's way by the Dirty White Boy. And I'm not going to say this as excusing that, but I just think that's how it was at the time. There was that kind of thing going around. And with the company that they're in, the demographic, it's basically just an old school style interview. I don't think he meant anything bad by it, if I'm being perfectly honest. For this whole segment, I thought Jake was fantastic. I did like the Dirty White Boy's interview. I like the Dirty White Boy. I don't think he means to be anything bad. I, I don't know him personally, so I can't say if he has any of those feelings in real life. I just think it was a, a sign of the times and coming up in territory wrestling. For that whole segment, I'm giving that a four. Next up, we have Brian Logan going up against the aforementioned Kendo the Samurai. This was pretty cool. I kind of liked this. The match wasn't great, but I liked Kendo's finisher. He had kind of a mandible claw, and while he had that with one hand, he reached around and punched the guy in the temple with his other hand, knocking him out. Kind of a cool move. They said that Tojo Yamamoto had used it. I've never seen Tojo use it. This is the first time I, I remember seeing it. I probably have seen it before. Uh, Kendo does pick up the win on this one. The match was okay. The finisher was amazing. I'm giving this a three. Then we go right into an interview with Daryl Van Horn and Kendo. Daryl Van Horn's a fantastic talker. You know if you've seen Father James Mitchell over the years, you know how great of a talker he is. This was a pretty good promo. I'm giving this one a four. Next up, and, and I wanted to talk about this when we got here. All of the Smoky Mountain wrestling stuff on network is all highlighting Chris Jericho and the Thrill Seekers. I really wish they would just release the entire library and the entire libraries of some of these other promotions. I know it's probably never going to happen, but I'd really like to see the entire Smoky Mountain run. It would be great if they put it all on there. As you could guess, this is a in-ring interview with the, the Thrill Seekers. It's a personality profile. As they're talking, 
Well Done comes out basically to challenge them. The interesting thing about this is Well Done has a list of demands. So 15 years before Jericho did it, Jericho and Lance Storm are listening to a list from Well Done. I wonder if that's where he got the idea from and he just kept it in the back of his head this whole time. This was a pretty good segment. I'm giving this one a four as well. Next up we get another promo with Bullet Bob Armstrong who says Bullet Bob is the commissioner of Smoky Mountain at this time. He says he has Macho Man Randy Savage coming in to fight Bruce Bruiser Bedlam. We go to a promo from Macho Man. I mean, this is Macho Man. How can you give it anything but a five? It was a fantastic promo. Macho Man being the Macho Man. Who doesn't love Macho Man Randy Savage? This was great. Going from that, we get an interview with his opponent, Bruiser Bedlam, and his manager, James E. Cornette. Jim Cornette, a a.k.a. the owner slash booker of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Again, this is mostly Cornette. You know... He's very divisive, but as a manager, he's one of the top four or five managers of all time, probably in the top two or three. This was a great promo. I'm giving this one a five as well. Next up, we have a promo with the Rock and Roll Express, which is basically Ricky Morton doing all the talking. The Rock and Roll Express, not really known as a as a promo team, is still pretty good watching the Rock and Rolls. I'm giving that promo a four. Then we go into, I guess what you would call the main event of the show, Tracy Smothers versus Bruiser Bedlam. This is where that other thing that I thought might be semi-offensive came into effect. Smothers has the rebel flag on his trunks, on the whole back of his trunks. And some people, again, are offended by that. So if you are, again, don't watch this. I like Tracy Smothers. I know for a fact because I know people that have known him. I know that he's not racist in any way. So take that with a grain of salt. He's just a southern boy that wore the, the Dixie flag, much like the Dukes of Hazard or any of your southern rock bands, Leonard Skinner, uh, 38 Special, anyone basically from the south of that era. It's just what they wore. I don't think it meant anything bad. I don't think they meant to be bad with it. This is a good match. Uh, Bruiser Bedlam does pick up the win here. Afterwards, he continues to attack Tracy Smothers, which brings out Bullet Bob Armstrong. They get into a little bit of it. For that, I'm giving the whole thing a four. I thought it was pretty good. We end the show with Tracy Smothers doing a promo. He's still covered in powder because of, during that beatdown, Jim Cornette threw powder in his face. It's a pretty good promo. Again, much like the Rock and Roll Express, Tracy Smothers isn't known for his promos, more his in-ring work, and he's one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time. For that promo, I'm giving that a three. I thought it was good, but not great. All in all, I found this to be a highly entertaining show. I do, again, I do acknowledge there is some stuff that some people are going to find offensive on here. And watching this, seeing some of the greats of all time, Jake Roberts, Chris Jericho, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Rock and Roll Express, Lance Storm, mixed in with some of the underrated wrestlers like Tracy Smothers, Bruiser Bedlam. Bruiser Bedlam has a crazy story if you don't know it. Look it up. It was on one of the Dark Side of the Ring episodes. Well done, another underrated team. This was just a really fun show. Uh, Smoky Mountain at the time was basically just your traditional southern wrestling with a little bit of an updated twist. I thought it was rather good. I'm giving the show in itself a four. Now if you made it to the end, let's smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't, and to let me know you made it to the end, let's put Lance Storm on there. Lance doesn't get enough love, it's always Jericho getting the love, so let's put Lance in the comments. With all that being said, my name is George Coles, and it's been another episode of It Came From The Network.